Hello and welcome. In this lecture, we are going to improve our bootloader by setting up segment registers and changing our program's origin. When the BIOS first loads us, we don't know what the segment registers are. Because of this, by having a bootloader like we have now, there's no guarantee it'll successfully boot on most systems. For example, if the BIOS sets our data segment to 0x7c0, and our assembly program's origin is 0x7C00, then the equation that will be dealt will be ds multiplied by 16 plus 0x7C00. So if dx is 0x7C0, then we end up with this, which does not point to our message. Because of these types of scenarios, it makes sense for us to initialize the data segment and all the other segment registers ourselves. So we're going to do that here. So the first thing I want you to do is change your assembly program's origin to zero. The next thing I want you to do is go to your start label and we're going to go CLI and then under that STI. So I'm going to do an assembler comment here just to describe what's going on. Clear interrupts. So this clears the interrupt flag and this enables interrupts. Obviously for those of you that assembly you've probably used interrupts before you know when you're calling Linux kernel or Windows kernel You'll go something like INT, ZUX, AD, something like that, right? Anyway, by clearing the interrupt flag here, it'll disable interrupts, which is what we want because we're about to change some segment registers. And we wouldn't want some hardware interrupt now to interrupt us while we're doing this because this is a very critical operation, right? Uh, the segments won't be set up correctly and all this sort of stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to go move ax zox 7c0 move ds ax move es ax now we can't just move this value directly into the data segment or the extra segment which is why we have to put in ax first that's just how the processor works okay so we've set up the data segment and the extra segment so let's say that you reference message as we do here move si message right because our or origin is zero, the assembler assumes that we're loaded into address zero into RAM, right? So this offset will be fairly low. It might be like 20 bytes or whatever. It'll be um, basically where in our binary file this is stored, okay? So that, you know, that it gets replaced with that, right? So let's just assume that it was 20 bytes, right? So I'm just going to put 20 here. Don't copy this. I'm just showing you. So when we did our lot SB, like something like this, right? What will happen is it will use our data segment and the SI register. So we do, uh, we know we've changed our data segment to 0x7c0, right? So we multiply that by 16, which gives us this, okay? And then we go 0xc00 plus 20, which gives us... Let me just get the calculator up, do the conversion from decimal there. Yeah, so that gives us hex 14, right? So then the result is 0xc14. And just to confirm that, if we did the same, uh, if we did the same here, 0x7, if we did 7c00 here, switch it to decimal, and we add... 20 and then we switch it back to hexadecimal yeah 7c14 so that is what the processor is doing right so this is why we need to change these data segments because if the bios has set them for us you know uh it could mean that our origin is set wrong for for our assembly program and then it, it won't link up correctly. Does that make sense? So by changing these segment registers ourselves, we're taking control of the situation rather than hoping that the BIOS has set them up the way we need it to be. Okay, so I'm just gonna uh, control Z here, put that back to what it was, and then we'll set up the stack segment. 
So um, the stack segment, we want to set this up a bit differently because the stack grows downwards, right? So what we can do is we can set the stack pointer to equal to 0x7c00 and then obviously it will grow down as I showed in the segmentation lecture. If you if you look there for the stack uh, section where we talk about the stack, uh, you'll see you'll see the stack described to you. So what we're going to do then, we're going to go move ax 0 x 0 0 move ss ax. So we're setting the stack segment now to be zero. Okay, that's that's what we want to do. And then we're going to set the stack pointer to 0 x 7 c 0 0. Okay. And now that should work all fine. So let's now test our program. So I've opened up terminal. I'm going to go nasm f bin dot forward slash boot dot asm dash o dot forward slash boot dot bin. And now we're going to use QMU again and load that. And we see hello world. So we can see that our program still works fine. It does exactly what it did before, but this time we've taken control of the situation. If we didn't do this and um, we relied on the BIOS to set these data segment, extra segment, and so on for us, it might set them to 0x7c0 like we've done, or it could set them to 0 and assume that our origin is 0x7c00. You really don't know what the registers are going to be when the BIOS loads this. So it's very important to take action and set these things yourself. Just because it works for us in the emulator does not necessarily mean it will work on your real computer, right? All computers are different. So this helps increase our chances of being able to be booted on a real machine. And before I forget, there's one other thing we need to do. We need to go jump 0x7c0 start. And then this will make our code segment become 0x7c0. Because our origin is 0, it is important our code segment is also changed to 0x7c0. So by doing this, that ensures that happens. Thank you for watching this lecture. This is a preview from the Developing a Multi-Threaded Kernel from Scratch course. If you would like to buy the course, you can find a direct link to the course with a discount coupon in the video description. If you would like to keep watching these free previews, please also check the description of this video for the next part.